Welcome back to NBA Cinema. Today we got to talk about Scott Foster and Chris Paul's history and what transpired the other night between those two. You know, Chris Paul was ejected and he has some choice words for Scott Foster. And this is pent up, built up years of animosity between the two. So um, if you go back and look at the record of Chris Paul's games officiated by Scott Foster as the crew chief, you know, if you look at his time with the Lakers, I mean, with the Clippers, the Houston Rockets, Thunder, and the Suns, he lost 13 consecutive playoff games. Uh, if you look at his overall record with Foster as a referee, he's 3-17 and dating all the way back to 2008 when he was with the Pelicans. Now, this uh, recent thing that just blew up, it's been reported that the issue between Foster and Chris Paul hit a... Uh, um, boiling point when he was with the Clippers something happened between Scott Foster and his son allegedly is what Chris Paul is saying and this is the reason that now it has reached new heights um, Paul went to the league about Scott Foster several times you have other people talking about Scott Foster Scott Foster has been involved with phone calls to Tim Donahue uh, back in 2006, 2007, hundreds of phone calls. I mean, it's, a, it's some other things at play here, potentially, you know, that calls in his character and, um, you know, his integrity. So we're going to look at what Chris Paul had to say. We're going to check out what others had to say, and I'll be back. Let's peep it. Yeah, we had a situation some years ago, and it's personal. You know what I mean? Like... The league know, everybody know, it's been a meeting and all that, and it's just a situation with my son, and so it's, yeah, we, yeah, so I'm I'm okay with a ref talking, you know, saying whatever, saying just don't use a tech to get your point across, you know what I mean? So I got to do a better job making sure I stay on the floor for my teammates, but yeah, that's that's that. You said it's a situation with your son? Yeah, they know what it is. He know what it is, too, so. We don't know what it is. Yeah, it's just no, I had a meeting with him, my dad, Doc Rivers, Bob Delaney, and all us, so. Yeah, yeah, him, too. Is that back in when you were with Houston? With the Clippers. Clippers. So. Come it was a whole thing, man, but it's it's still been a thing for a while. So I ain't saying nothing to get fined, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is what it is at this point. Better yourselves to lose him at that point. I mean, I, don't, I think we were down double digits already, and we obviously need CP and his, his leadership and the way he manages the game. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't like and appreciate. I know that there's history and all that. And I know he talked about it, but when both the player and the ref engage in conversation, like that has to kind of stay there. That was I told, I told uh, Scott that after he ejected him, it's like there are certain situations where I know players overstep. That always happens a lot. There's times that. You kind of know you have to back off, but <clears throat> when both are engaging, like I don't like that. That's the part that that messed with me the most. Watching is just like two guys talking, you know, speaking their truths, and let's just play basketball. I want to. Someone should ask Adam Silver this: If I'm a player, I'm playing a game that's emotional. I'm acting in real time, real de human emotions, and when I don't control my emotions a ref can give me a technical, which means whatever I said to him irritated him so bad he that he didn't emotions. control his emotions mm -hmm. and he gave me a tech. So my emotions led to him being emotional, but he gets to give me a tech for it, and that's fine. How? Not fine. It's not fine. He's supposed to be the most cool and collective motherfucker on here because there's no nothing for him. He doesn't leave here with a win or a loss. Whatever he does, 
6,000, 3,000, whatever he makes, he gets it no matter fucking what. No one's just, how many, what's the ref's record? Right. What's Billy's record? What is, zero and fucking zero, his whole career, zero and zero. There's no win or loss. You just look at the game, doop, fuck you, ref. Fuck you, ref. That's why you missed the shot. That's why you missed the shot. Uh huh. That's why you got subbed out. <laughs> like, what, like, what is the emotion? Why right. you? What do you? Why? Tech, what oh, do you gain for tech, throwing these people out? Tech. Yeah. You, you call me what? Tech. Like, this is the most fucking emotional dudes in the game. So a lot of points there. Kudos to Chris Paul for not taking the bait and saying something that would get him fined. Although, you know, it's alarming that Chris Paul has gone to the league level, you know, upper management in different places at the league office level, and nothing has been done about Scott Foster. He continues to officiate games that Chris Paul is playing in. Um, I'm pretty sure you could do something about that, or you could investigate that deeply and see that a winning player like Chris Paul rarely wins when this guy's at the helm or the crew chief so uh, I, w I just want to see like what precautions the league has taken to avoid this type of thing because Chris Paul shouldn't face anything from this but Scott Foster you look back into his shaky background and his relationship with Tim Donahue then you look at that you're like oh this dude is betting on games so that's kind of where I agree with Gilbert Arenas and what he's saying. Everything he said was absolutely 100% right uh, with that. But he is winning, leaving the game. If he was involved in the stuff Tim Donahue was involved in and it's found out and you could prove that he was benefiting from fixing games, then, yes, he, he is leaving a winner, you know, in his pockets. So, um, you got to look at that, too, if you're Gilbert Arenas. Like, I get his point, but, yeah, some referees do leave games winners and losers. You know what I'm saying? So I would say look at that uh, with his point. And Steph is right. You know, it, it has to be cool on the court. You know, when you're engaging in a conversation, Scott Foster, you could tell he just – you could see it on his face. He didn't hide it on his countenance very well um, when you saw how he was looking at Chris Paul. he I mean, he was animated giving him that tech and giving him, you know, back-to-back -back text because he – he, it's almost like he wants Chris Paul to engage. It was very antagonizing with the way he gave him his technical foul. And if you know it's been, you know, something as sensitive as, uh, you know, issue with his son. And, and my other problem, let me go to this right quick. I know I'm bouncing around, but let me go to this right quick. My other problem is Chris Paul was the head of the NBA Players Association for many years until C.J. McCollum recently took over that position um <clears throat> so it wasn't just a random going to the league office you know this was the head of the players association going to the league with a complaint about an official and not going by itself others have had complaints about the same official um this same official what 137 well how, however many calls it said you know he had with tim donahue during the you know during the time frame that all that dirty information was coming out. Um, you know, what what you know what what do you do with someone like that? The fact that he's still a crew chief and is able to, to prance around and parade around and, and just you know be be the guy for uh NBA playoff games like that and particularly getting assigned to Chris Paul so often it's alarming to me when you had someone that held such a position uh, with the Players Association. But, again, I mean, they I, I want to know. They need to be transparent and come out with a report about what was done in regards to the issue with Chris Paul's son, what the issue was. Because the more they don't say about this, the dirtier the league looks uh, in its handling of this matter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Chris Paul – <laughs> I know Chris Paul wanted to take his head off, you know, when he gave him that second tech. Because what Scott Foster did in that moment is he said, look, I got the power. So I can put you out this game. And one thing we cannot stand is basketball fans. I know we disagree in the comment section sometimes. But one thing we all, I think I can speak for everybody. One thing we all can't stand is an official 
being the star of a game we want to watch. That point right there, I think, is universal. We all have agreed in unison with that before. Like, don't take over the game. We're here to see players. We've paid tickets to see teams at full strength. Now, if a fight or something breaks out, you have to do what you got to do. Uh, if they're very disrespectful and they're making contact with officials and all that type of stuff, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. But, um, you know, give them a tech. I'm not even opposed to if you have to give a player a tech, you know, they have to come out the game at that point. You know what I'm saying? Or something. Like, you know, don't, don't give back-to-back techs unless it's extreme. Because then where is the fine line? Of when I give back to back text opposed to when I don't. See what I'm saying? Where's that fine line reside if I can get emotional and just give out multiple texts opposed to someone who's engaging in violence or is very persistent in their verbal assault with an official at the utmost level? You know what I'm saying? So that's like these things, I think they have to be fine, clear, and concise around the league so people can really know how to measure measure them and have a proper barometer on how we're going to determine these things but let me know what you guys think in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe to next time peace